Welcome to Music for Dancers, where we're helping dancers build a stronger connection to the music every single day. And today, we're gonna continue with our series of pulses. So we're gonna call this Pulse Series Part Two, and I suspect there's gonna be a part three and possibly more, because in the last video, we talked about something called an explicit pulse. And the explicit pulses are, we call these block party feels, where you can hear from a mile away the pulse that's in the music. And today we're gonna to start something that's a little more complex, a little more interesting, and it's called implied pulse. And it fits along this, what I call the pulse spectrum. And at one end of our spectrum, we're gonna have the explicit pulse, and at the other end, we have something called the implied pulse. Now this implied pulse is fascinating, that even if we can't hear it in dance music, their musicians know where the time is. And once they establish this implied pulse, it stays just the same as if there was a metronome playing, and even though you may or may not be able to hear it immediately, the pulse is there from the beginning to the end of the song. So it's quite fascinating. And you already know about this, actually. If you've ever sang a nursery rhyme when you, were, you did Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, or if you grew up in this country, you probably know Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. I'm not gonna apologize for my singing there, but if you've been in a group of people, a group of kids usually, and they taught you this nursery rhyme or any other one, there's a little pulse that you're keeping whether you know it or not. Everybody who's singing it could march to it. Nobody does, but you could. And that's because there's an implied pulse happening from the beginning of the nursery rhyme to the end. Now maybe you didn't grow up in this country, but if you did, and you're here, and you go to someone's birthday party, or you're at a restaurant, everybody in the room singing some variation of happy birthday. And happy birthday is another example of an implied pulse. And so everybody in the room, you can have 200, 500 people, you can have a whole stadium, 50,000 people, singing happy birthday to somebody, and assuming they've been around it, they will know which words to make longer, and shorter and where the pauses are. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. And they know when to wait. And that's because they don't think about it. Who thinks about it when they're singing happy birthday? But there is an implied pulse occurring in happy birthday. So think about happy birthday next time it's playing and you'll hear that there is a pulse from the beginning to the end. Nursery rhymes that children are singing they all have a pulse and a cadence that's occurring. Even though no one's marking it out, everybody is following a similar pulse. Obviously, some people do it better than others. That's okay, but they're all close. And as you start seeing it in dance music, we have this other very interesting thing. Rather than the pulse varying like we might in a, in a nursery rhyme a little bit because of the crowd, when people put together dance music, even if the pulse is implied, meaning there's no drummer pounding it out, there's no block party feel that makes it really obvious, that pulse is going to start and is gonna occur from the beginning to the end of the song and be just as a metronome is pulsing, whether you can hear it or not, the pulse stays the same from the beginning to the end. Piano only. A little bit of strings in the background, then the voice. Three in the morning, and right at this point, I can't be dreaming anybody that has enough experience already knows that this song is in six. The only instrument that's playing that is the piano player, and then the voice confirms it for them. And at that point, it's just so obvious with enough experience. Now, if you're new to this, it won't be obvious. It almost sounds like the piano player by themselves is playing slow, what we also know as rubato. But it's not at all. It's totally perfectly on time, and everybody can hear it. And then the drums come in and confirm where the time is and make it easy. It's a much more explicit pulse at this time. And that's very common in an introduction or at the end of the music, then you will have something that is, has an implied pulse and it becomes clearer and clearer the far so the song goes. 
more songs you listen to where this applied pulse is occurring, the more you can hear it in new songs that you know nothing about. So whether you like the song, hate the song, that's not the point. The pulse is implied, the piano player is playing it. If we click or march to it, it's very, very straight and you'll find it's very consistent. That pulse is set up and from beginning to end, once that pulse is established, it goes all the way through. And I'll bet 50 bucks that guy had on a pair of headphones with a click track playing when he recorded it. And that's so common these days with music. Now we're gonna listen to a couple more songs and you want to find music that you have and figure out where the pulse is. And there's two kind of types of these implied pulse. That one had a single instrument playing it. Sometimes there'll be a group of instruments, but you will find somebody marking the time for you. Now you can also have a percussion section playing, and while a percussion section is playing, usually they're pounding out the time for us. They're marking it for us. But sometimes in some songs, and especially, in some parts of songs. The musicians want to be creative and they want to do some things that almost hide the time. And one of the skills that we have to develop as dancers is feeling the pulse even when the musicians are doing something more complicated and less obvious about the time. They're not really trying to hide it from us, they're trying to make something fun and interesting and creative. And in so doing, they can hide the time a little bit. Now, let's go back to a song that we used in the last session. Michael McDonald was singing, I Heard It Through the Grapevine. And let's review that for just a second because I have another song that relates and I'd like to show you. So here's Michael McDonald, I Heard It Through the Grapevine. Very short snippet. through eight bars. That was just an eight bar refresher. And it's assumed that you've gone back and watched the other video, part one of the Pulse series, which was on Explicit Pulse. And we use that song, I heard it through the grapevine, to make sure that we're clear on this Explicit Pulse. Now we're gonna transition and, and listen to a song that has a very implied pulse, but there's a percussion section. Uh, explicitly, there's a tambourine that's playing and a bass player and they are marking the time and it is very clear with enough experience exactly where the time is but many people when i play this interactively i'm doing a class or i'm doing a private lesson they will be confused at the beginning of this song because it is not so obvious it is definitely not an explicit pulse so let's go ahead and listen to this song and then we'll discuss it together Now, right by now, anybody who has extensive experience with listening to percussion can take that tambourine apart, take it apart, and combine it with the bass part there, and they already know where the pulse is occurring. And where that little wow came in, that's easy with enough experience. You've heard it once or twice to know exactly where that's gonna lay. Now, a few of you already know this little secret. This happens to be the same song. I heard it through the grapevine. But it's, a, it's, it's the actual 1967 original vocals, Gladys Knight and the Pips, with a brand new rhythm track that's been re-recorded and remixed, and it's very sophisticated, especially compared to the original. So it's a, the pulse is implied it's there, but the rhythm section's hiding it. Even when the drummer comes in here, instead of being a standard two and four, it's, it's syncopated, and so the pulse is still there, but these musicians, this track, does not try to hand it to you the way many other commercial tunes do. So it's a fascinating study, and a simple song can have a complicated rhythm track, and as a dancer, now I have to know how that pulse works because the musicians are not gonna hand it to me. And the more you hear songs like this, the easier it is in new songs as well. Like I said earlier, that's a fascinating example of an implied pulse where the musicians are just not handing it to us. They're giving us enough foundation that if we know enough with enough experience, 
we can go ahead and exactly nail the pulse every time in that song. It's actually quite easy with enough experience. But that does confuse so many people the first few times they hear it. And very often you have to go farther in the song and listen to something that gives you the pulse and makes it clear. And then you can go back to the beginning and figure out exactly what happens. Because in that tune, the tambourine part keeps going. So you do have to be able to hear the layers, something we've talked about in earlier videos. But you do need to hear those. And when you do, you can track the tambourine. You can see how it all comes together. And with enough experience, you too can hear the implied pulse that is occurring from the beginning to the end of that song. So that's a fascinating study. Now, a couple other things that are important about this implied pulse concept. Somebody once asked me, isn't pulse the same as, as counting? And the reality is no. And a perfect example for salsa dancers or Latin dancers who, who are dancing on one or on two. But let's talk about the on one dancer for an example. An on one dancer is assuming that a certain footstep will go forward on count one. And many dancers will confuse that and they will dance on count five as what most instructors would consider should be on count one. That's fine, you could dance it either way and if you're consistent within yourself, that's fine. But that on five dancer would take what's normally on one and they can be perfectly on the pulse, but not on one. So the pulse underlies the count. You have the pulse down below. And if a dancer doesn't get the pulse, then they might as well throw the music out and just dance to what they're hearing in their head. The pulse is the underlying infrastructure that is always there, the pulse and the inner pulse. On top of that, we assign numbers to the different parts of the pulse, and that's how we get our numbering system. So if I'm counting one, one to eight, or one to four, that's on top of the pulse. But you will find dancers sometimes that take that pulse and they'll get the pulse right, which is dramatically an upgrade from just missing it all together. And then once they have the pulse, that doesn't guarantee that they will have the, the musician's one with the dance one. And that applies if you're dancing on to, it, it, the style of music doesn't matter, but you do want to know where the one is. Then if you choose to do something else, more power to you. There's no magic that you have to do a certain thing on a certain step. There are a hundred styles out there. And as we cross different types of music, you don't have to dance on one, but as a dancer, when you know where it is, it gives you a hundred options and it's much nicer to know than to be guessing. So this is a fascinating concept and it's really deep. The more you explore, the more you'll start hearing these implied pulse in all sorts of music. I have some great salsa examples, uh, a bachata example, and a tango example that I'll share with you here in one of the upcoming tapes. But this concept is something you definitely wanna go ahead and get your head around as soon as possible because over time, you'll start knowing where one is in every single tune you're in. And then you can choose to dance around it. It doesn't mean you have to dance on the count but it's always there for you whenever you want it. So I'm excited about some of these upcoming videos and I'm excited that you're spending the time with us right here now. So remember, be sure to share this with your friends, give it a thumbs up, don't be selfish. There are other dancers that need this information. Go ahead and subscribe to this series because then you'll get updates as soon as they happen. And remember, a groove is a terrible thing to waste. So I look forward to seeing you on the next edition of Music for Dancers.